This cable changes the way your IEMs sound. Now, don't get your pitchforks out just yet. I'm not talking about the audiophile silver cables making a difference. No, no. This really changes things. Equalization, or EQ, the ability to make tuning changes to your listening experience, ranging from basic tasks like I want more bass to more complex adjustments that aim to correct the frequency response of a headphone or speaker system and bring it closer to a target response. It's something which is widely used and for good reason. It's a great way to make almost any headphone or speaker system better, or at least certainly closer to your ideal tastes. And so when I first heard about the Moondrop free DSP, I was pretty excited. This is a product which goes straight from your 2-pin IEMs to USB-C. The DAC and AMP are built in, and it allows you to apply EQ profiles to change the way that your IEMs sound. It also provides playback controls and a microphone, and it's a pretty high-quality looking cable to boot. This is a quick test of how the Moondrop free DSP's microphone sounds when just wearing it normally. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. And then this is a quick test of how it sounds when holding it in front of me. The quick round fox jumped over the lazy dog. And all of this for under 30 US dollars makes this pretty appealing, at least on the surface. The unit comes with a fairly basic tin case, but it's not one that's actually intended for carrying around with your IEMs. This is for the most part no larger than a normal IEM cable, so you'd use your normal IEM case. Inside the case, there is a QR code which leads you to the download page for the app, which we will get to in a sec. The construction of the product is unassuming. There's no bulky inline box or anything like that, and instead, the DAC, AMP, and processing circuitry are all built into the USB-C connector, which remains very compact. If you weren't told, there'd be little to indicate that this was different from most regular cables. The connectors are metal, not plastic, and nicely finished too, and the cable, whilst a tad rubbery, is very soft, looks great, and the overall build quality, again for under 30 US dollars, is pretty exceptional. Where things start to take a turn for the worst is, unfortunately, the app itself. Which, by the way, that's only available on Android if you're on iOS. Even if you have a USB-C iPhone or iPad, you won't be able to change any of the EQ settings on this. Though you should still be able to just plug it in and use it as a normal audio device. Upon downloading it, it was entirely in Chinese and took a bit of assistance from a friend who had already set one up to help me get it set to English. I was a bit surprised though when I plugged in the Moondrop Free, hit the plus button to access the controls, and was then requested to grant the app access to read and manage all files on my phone before it would let me change anything, which is not exactly something that I'm comfortable granting any app access to unless there is a very particular reason to do so, and it's not exactly clear to me why an EQ configuration app needs access to everything on my phone. For many security conscious viewers, that could well be an outright deal breaker already. But once you are in, you're greeted with this display, and this is where I then discovered that there are some very significant limitations to the EQ that are not mentioned on the product page. Firstly, there are only peak filters, no shelving filters, so you can't add a bass shelf or a treble shelf. You have to do everything with peak filters, although there are a decent number of bands available, 9 in total. Secondly, you can only configure EQ bands between 40Hz and 10kHz, which that's a bit of an odd limitation. I'm not exactly sure why it's in place, particularly the low frequency limit, and these already are going to make it quite difficult to configure EQ profiles to get the alteration that you want, but it continues to get worse. Your gain values have to be integers, so you can't have a 2.5 dB bass boost, you can only have 2 or 3. So any adjustments that you do make, not only are they limited in where you can put them, but also they have to be quite coarse. Then there are limitations to the amplitude of the adjustments that you make. You can only go as low as minus 12 dB, and only as high as plus 3 dB, so anything more than a moderate increase in the area of frequency response you're trying to adjust just isn't possible. So no 6 dB bass boosts for bass heads. The user interface is also just a list of input boxes. There's no preview of the adjustment you're making, so if you like to either adjust or at least check things visually, as as you can do in many other apps, that's not an option here. Oh, and then there is the fact that there is no headroom or preamp option available. So usually if you're applying a say 4 dB bass boost, you would cut the level of the overall signal by at least 4 dB to prevent clipping. But here you can't do that, so it just clips. That's a pretty major issue on an already long list of issues. You can only go up to plus 3 dB, it can clip with any positive adjustments anyway, all of your adjustments have to be made in coarse 1 dB steps, all of your adjustments have to be between 40 Hz and 10 kHz, you can't use shelving filters, and it's also really hard to see what you're doing because there is no visual display. 
So because of all these limitations, I found myself when using the Moondrop Free really struggling to get the intended alteration I was looking for compared to other tools like Rune or EQAPO, both of which are considerably more flexible. Or if you are on Android, both Rune Arc and USB Audio Player Pro have comprehensive EQ options available without these limitations. When you can make the adjustments that you're looking for within these limitations, it works fine. And actually, as far as portable sources go, this sounds pretty decent. Comparing like for like without EQ, I preferred running the Truth Ear Zero Red and the Hyperman Svana on this versus another very popular budget option, the renowned Apple Dongle. So I definitely don't feel that there's any trade-off in sound quality to get the extra functionality. This has a very competent level of detail retrieval without the kind of glarier, sometimes more sterile sound that a lot of cheaper sources can often exhibit. I didn't enjoy it as much as portable options like the Luxury and Precision W2131 or the Chord Mojo 2, but both of those are considerably more expensive and considerably bigger. The only real nitpick I had with the subjective sound was that the sound on the free was a little bit hazier or softer than on some other sources, and when I went to measure it afterwards, I found that the phase noise or jitter, particularly at low frequencies, was considerably higher than most other devices I've tested, so that could be the culprit for that. Though looking at other objective tests, this goes below minus 100 dB total harmonic distortion plus noise, intermodulation distortion and multitone performance are both very clean, and if you want to see further measurements and objective information about the Moondrop Free, we've got a full measurement post on the audio file section of headphones.com, there's also a link to that in the description. So do I think that you should buy this? Well, not if your intention was to use it for its intended purpose. Quite frankly, the software for this feels clunky, overly restrictive, and to be blunt, unfinished. This may only be $30, but in my opinion right now this is simply not suitable for what it's being advertised as, and Moondrop should be more upfront about the software limitations of this product on the actual product page, rather than waiting for the user to find out once they buy it and get it at home. Hopefully this is something which might change. A lot of these restrictions should in theory be able to be fixed, not even with a firmware update or product revision, but just an update to the app itself. A preview of the EQ profile that you're making, for instance, could rely entirely on the phone. The free doesn't even need to communicate with the app until you actually want to save the profile to it. So fingers crossed that a future app update alleviates some of these issues, but right now I would not recommend buying this if your hope was to use it for the EQ. If that's what you're looking for, I'd suggest just getting USB Audio Player Pro, which will allow you to EQ local files and both Tidal and Cobus streaming. The kind of person that I think this might work well for, though, are those who don't really care about the EQ, they just want a good sounding 2-pin IEM to USB-C adapter. I really enjoyed the fact that when using my IEMs on the go, I didn't have to fuss with any dongles or any external DACs and amps, I could just plug my IEMs directly into my phone. It was kind of like having my headphone jack back again. And so, given as objectively, this performs pretty well in most areas, and subjectively, I thought it was on par with or slightly better than the Apple dongle. If you're looking for a convenient way to connect your IEMs to your phone directly, for $30, this is a nice DAC with a microphone and a nice cable, and that alone is not bad. But until the software improves and some of the limitations are fixed, this unfortunately does not deliver on its promises with regards to those wanting to use EQ. Hopefully that video was interesting and useful, and if you've got any questions you wanted to ask about gear, music, or anything else at all, head over to the Headphones.com Discord server or the Headphones.com forum, and I and other Wiggly Air enthusiasts will endeavour to help. Thanks for watching, until next time.